Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you for connecting with me in this YouTube message to you. I'm Bishop Henry Luko Rombi, and I want to address on the leadership issue. And this leadership issue that I want to particularly emphasize is mentorship in leadership. Mentorship in leadership. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for raising leaders today who are able to reach out and to lead people who need leading and many of us need leaders who can lead us to where we should go in our goals will you connect with us and help us to follow what you want us to learn from you in jesus mighty name we pray amen mentorship in leadership is something that is so important for us to know and i want to start by saying the Lord Jesus Christ is a wonderful example. The Lord Jesus Christ is a wonderful example because when he came and he was ready to minister, he picked 12 men to be with him and he was training them because he was prepared to pour himself in them knowing that after only three years he was going to leave and go back to heaven. He was intentional who to choose. And when we read Luke chapter 6, 12, he prayed the whole night before he made a choice of only 12 people. He prayed the whole night to make a choice of only 12 people. And then when they came to him, he trained them. And then he entrusted the whole ministry to them to continue. And that is amazing. Training for three years, impacting 12 people minus one. And then you have a ministry that continues on and on and up to today. Here we are 2,000 years ago. Those apostles planted in people what has been planted from one person to another. And the work still continues. Why? Because a leader who is a mentor impacted men who were able to continue. We are looking at Moses. Moses had a young man called Joshua with whom they left Egypt and traveled the whole length of the wilderness for 40 years Moses was being trailed by Joshua. And Joshua was well seasoned in leadership that he was the one given the mandate to finish the mission that Moses started in Egypt. Forty years training it prepared him to be the pacifier of the Holy Land. And he did drive out all those nations who were already there. And then he divided that land promised to Abraham to the tribes of, of Jacob. Now, I can see that you and I, when we are growing up into leadership, we need somebody we can follow. We need somebody whom we can, uh, can connect with to teach us leadership. I have personally learned a lot, and I want to let you know a few things that I have learned. Because I was very enthusiastic, young person wanting to be a leader, I was very intentional about following the footsteps of particular people God brought in on my path. When I was a teacher, I admired my headmaster because he was a disciplined man. He kept time. He was very smart. And I looked to him because he was an example. He was a role model. And so you need to follow the footsteps of somebody that you admire. Somebody to mentor you either directly or indirectly, because there are certain people who literally mentor people indirectly, and this headmaster was a great guy. Now, I worked so diligently that after two years, going to, two years actually, the third year he made me his deputy. And to us, the, the end of the third year, in my last four years in that particular school, I became the head, he was promoted, and then I was also promoted after his promotion. I copied him, and I followed him. He was promoted, I was also promoted. Second, I want you to be ready to learn everything that you can learn. A young growing leader must be a student who will be learning and you need to learn from seasoned leaders. You never must be lazy in learning. You learn and learn and learn as much as you can contain because tomorrow you need it. And then you need to be humble. Peter writes to us who are younger to be humble. We need to look to us, those who have gone ahead of us, as a role model. And you can only learn when you are humble. 
Abraham, though, was a different man. He was not just only humble, he was obedient. He listened to what God said and he obeyed. And God took that for a faith that made him a friend to Abraham. And I see many of us sometimes fail because we don't obey our seniors. We do not submit ourselves to their instructions and we're not disciplined enough like them. Therefore, I want to ask you, who is your mentor? Who is mentoring you? Because that is where the tire hits the road. If you don't have a mentor, look for one. If you have an admirer that you want to think you need to line yourself according to his lifestyle, you better look for that one and be intentional. Because Timothy was written this letter in the second letter of Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 2, that what you have heard from me that I have taught. Give it to reliable people who will also teach other people. Therefore, leadership is transferable. Mentorship is to prepare somebody who will prepare somebody who will prepare somebody. Now, that's how the gospel reached us. The apostle passed the word from one person to another, one generation to another, until it reached Uganda. And therefore, what you know, pass it on to somebody else. Because for me personally, I long to produce leaders who are better than me, who are better than me. Think of any image. I'm six feet five inches tall. If somebody who is my mentee would want to stand on my shoulder, he's going to be much taller than me. He's going to be much bigger than me because they already have their potentials and they're taking mine as a top up. So I long to see somebody who is following me to be much, much better than me. So look at your mentor. Look at the size of your mentor. Look at the abilities he has. L listen, he is going to be able to be much, much lower than you are when you come to full maturity of your leadership. Now, if you have mentored somebody, please teach other people as well. Teach other people as well. Because when you teach other people, you're growing, you're multiplying. And so one old saint told me, I was a young school teacher, he told me, see, this is it, young man. He pulled me to his room where we were. He pulled me to his room. He said, young man, I want you to know something that will keep you in your life for a long time. Never, ever look down upon anybody because there is something in somebody. No one is 100% good. Neither is one 100% bad. There is a mixture. He said, when you meet somebody, pick something good in that person. Go meet another person. Pick something good in that person. Never ever pick anything bad because already you have enough of your own. And so this guy taught me something very, very unique. He says, as a leader, nobody is utterly useless. Nobody is utterly useless. There may be something in somebody which can help you learn something. And so personally, over the years, I have four guiding principles that have literally helped me to steer my course carefully and I have been growing as I walk along that side. There, there are four things I want to tell you. One, be holy, meaning walk in integrity as a leader. Start from a young leader. Grow into an old leader walking in integrity, in holiness. I have walked in integrity. And at, at this time, I wanted integrity and holiness to govern my relationship. How I relate to people and how I relate to things around me, how I relate to things like money, property around me. I want to be a man of integrity. I want my conscience to be clear about everything I have with people, everything entrusted to me. I wanted to walk in that direction. Now, it's very hard today to get guys who are men and women of integrity. But they're there. Be one of them. Be one of the people who can walk in integrity, you're one of the people who can walk knowing that before God, I am not deliberately hurting anybody and I'm not deliberately infringing on the freedom of somebody. And walking in holiness to me meant I relate well with the opposite sex. I relate well with the opposite sex because I am a human being and I can be attracted. Now, many leaders have fallen there. Many, many leaders have fallen there. I want to relate well with my superiors. Those above me, I need to look to them and I need to submit myself to them. I had one who was somebody who was less educated than myself, but very wise, very wise. 
I look to him. I committed myself to him. The second thing is very related. Be humble. Be humble. Now, leadership tends to make some people feel that they're on top. I am the retired archbishop. I was at the top, at the pinnacle of my church. Now, some people think now that is where you must be the most powerful man or you must be the most recognized person. Fine, in a way, yes, it is an office. But your office doesn't make a person. A person makes the office. So if you're a man who is going to be humble, your office is going to be accessible. Your office is going to minister to people who are in need. It's not being on top. Being humble, meaning you're going to be an example, and people can, can imitate you, the way you walk, the way you do your work, the way you talk, the way you relate. When you are humble, Jesus Christ says these words. The humble will be lifted up. The exalted will be brought down. And so to me, I learned from him as an example. He has walked in humility. He even taught us in Matthew eleven twenty nine, Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and your soul will find rest. Now be humble as a leader so that people can come to you. People can, you can minister to people because they find you attractive. The third thing, be a hard worker. Be a hard worker. In a country like ours, laziness is already in us. Many of us, our work ethics is very poor. We do not commit ourselves to serving on time and working as long as we are supposed to work and going when we have finished at least something. Many of us don't do that. Listen, if you're a hard worker, Paul writes to the Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. This one I can read for you. He's talking about hard working and why you should work hard, and who should be your target for working hard. Look at verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Whatever you do, seek to please God. And God is the one with a very high standard, my friend. Pleasing God is not very easy. But if you're going to work in order that God may be pleased with you, you're not going to be looking for somebody to police you, to supervise you. You know that your supervisor is very accurate. And so work and commit yourself to working with a heart to please God. You know, when I work hard, those who follow me, those who are my subordinates, will follow my footsteps. My attitude to work, my desire to work, my availability to work influences people who are after me, those who are following me. And so it's so necessary for me to be an example in my way of work. One of these things for me, when I know it is hard working and working very well, I want to keep time. I want to be where I'm supposed to be on time. And so people who work with me know this guy is timekeeper. He wants to keep time. Now that discipline is very, very important in a country like ours where people sit and waste time talking over non-issues. Hard working is necessary. It doesn't kill, but it promotes dignity. Hard working is important because there is produce out of hard work. And God blesses the works of our hands. Now, being a hard worker is being a leader with an example that can be followed. And fourthly, be an honest person. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. Don't be beating about the bush. Don't walk in gray areas. You are either white or black. Let your yes be yes. And let your no be no. Do you know, people trust an honest person. When he tells you, I'm going to come and see you on the time you have invited me to come in, and five o'clock is five o'clock. When he says, I will be there to help you with what you have asked me to do, he will keep that word. When you say, I'll give you what you have asked me to do, whether it be 50,000 or 500,000 or 5 million, and I said yes to that, I want to keep my word. People trust honest people. Because honesty is transparency. It's letting your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is heaven. An honest person is readable. An honest person is predictable. An honest person will have no, no mystery about him or her. An honest person is going to be somebody you can depend on. And what a beautiful thing it is. Your words carry weight. 
Because they know that when you say something, you mean it. When you say something, you mean it. So your words carry weight. To date, I'm asking God to help me to walk in integrity, to be humble, to be a hard worker, to be honest, and be a person of integrity. Let me just conclude this message on leadership for you. There are four things I want to mention to you. Number one, the Lord our God is able to raise leaders who are able to reflect him, and you can be one of those leaders. A leader that will have godly essence about them, and when you see them, you understand something supernatural is in that person. And God is able to raise people like that. Why don't you be one of them? I want to ask you again, secondly, do you think you're one of those God is raising? Do you think you're that particular person that God has put his hand upon and God is shaping you up? Mind you, shaping can be very painful sometimes. It involves pruning so that you are fruitful in your ministry. Jesus Christ said to his disciples, you did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you that you may go bear fruit that will last. Now, if you're going to be one of them, you shape yourself according to what God wants you to be. Thirdly, leaders will determine the quality of life followers will experience. If you're a bad leader, the life of your followers will be horrible. If you're a good leader, you'll find that things will be prosperous and a blessing. And people rise or fall in a community depending on the quality of their leaders. And I can tell you, be, a, be one who can bring a blessing to those who follow you. And then finally, I am so sad to say this, that godly leadership is in short supply in our country. That is why we need to mentor people. That's why I spend my time with younger people to show them that as a young person, God can pick you up. He picked David. He was very young. He picked Solomon. He was very young. He picked Samuel. He was just only a toddler. And God can pick people. And God can walk and work in people's life to be able to lead godly living, to be exemplary to people that they are following. My beloved, thank you so much for inviting me to share just a few thoughts for you. And I believe very strongly that if you are ever going to excel in growing into a seasoned leader, imitate Christ, the best example, the best mentor, and somebody, I can tell you, who trained me through people who love him. God bless you, and may he watch over your desire to be a leader. I want to say thank you. Father, raise them up. Father, bless them. Father, encourage them. Father, walk with them. Father, let them follow you. Father, let them know you and let them trust you because you are God. And as you are raising people today, there is a lot of cry in the multitude for somebody they can follow, for a role model they can follow, especially this young generation. The blessing of God I ask to rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.